No, ale... Tak jsme na tom, jo, ještě dvě minuty. Jo. Teď tě zaplej, teda. Jo. Taky nevím, ale vím, koho myslíš. Já jsem měl vlastně prezentace taky o tom i nahrávací kajrozně. Když tam je nějaká jednoduchá kajrozní vibrace, to si ten to poškazuje. Pěkný. To asi nemá dělat. Ještě nechci pofoukat. minutku, že? Tak zhruba. Já se představím. A ah, dík. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Marek Winkler. I am a member of BRMS Quality Engineering. BRMS stands for Business Room Management System, which is a product based on the rules platform, which I'm to talk about in a few minutes. My talk is about the news in the version 6, which has come out quite recently in the community project. Let us start with uh, the agenda. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, the rules uh, a little bit for those who uh, didn't have a chance to get their hands on it. Uh, then I will speak uh, a little bit about uh, Freak algorithm, which is uh, a new uh, pattern matching algorithm uh, implemented in rule 6. Uh, then uh, we will briefly uh, speak about uh, new uh, key API, which replaces knowledge API known from the rules 5 and integration with uh, CDI context and dependency injection. The rules. Uh, if you uh, have a look at uh, the documentation, uh, you can see that uh, the rules is described as unified and integrated platform for rules, workflow, and event processing. Uh, Different components of the rules uh, take care of uh, these uh, different aspects. Uh, for instance, uh, the rule engine is uh, implemented uh, by a component called the rules expert. Uh, the workflow is uh, taken care by uh, JBPM. Uh, event processing uh, uh, is being done by the rules fusion, which is uh, tightly integrated with the rules, the rules expert. Uh, if you uh, look at uh, the rules from a little bit academic point of view, it could be classified as uh, a hybrid uh, reasoning system. Uh, this means that uh, it combines uh, backward and forward chaining approaches. Uh, backward chaining uh, approach, uh, for those of you who might not be familiar with this, uh, is uh, based on uh, specifying a goal uh, which is then uh, uh, tried to uh, be proved uh, based on a given set of facts and rules. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is an approach common uh, from logic programming, uh, from Prolog, for instance. Uh, forward chaining approach uh, is uh, a little bit different. Uh, when a fact uh, enters the rule engine, uh, the rule engine uh, tries to uh, find uh, reactively uh, the rules which uh, could be triggered by this fact 
and uh, uh, this uh, rule triggering may continue and uh, the engine is uh, inferring uh, uh, the other knowledge from the input fact. The rules historically uh, was based uh, or implemented as a forward chaining uh, inference engine, uh, but uh, nowadays, uh, basically because of Freak, it has become uh, more a uh, combination of uh, these two approaches. In the rules five, you might recall that uh, there were already implemented queries which uh, were doing uh, backward chaining known from uh, proc in a limited fashion. So uh, the introduction may continue with uh, saying what a typical rule might look like. Uh, the rules uh, support uh, a, ver a variety of uh, forms how to specify a rule. This is the simplest one. Uh, you just uh, say that there is a rule which uh, uh, has a name, some attributes, and then you specify uh, uh, the condition which uh, uh, says when the rule uh, is uh, uh, to be activated. This condition is all, uh, often referred to as uh, the left-hand side, and uh, it uh, consists of some conditional elements uh, which are uh, processed by the uh, rule engine during the pattern matching phase. We will get to this later. Um, then there is uh, the then part uh, or uh, consequence, uh, which you can imagine uh, such as uh, a Java code or something which uh, tells you uh, what to do if uh, the rule uh, has a satisfied condition and uh, what effect uh, should uh, uh, be carried out. Uh, coming to the rule six, you might uh, encounter a couple of uh, new uh, projects and uh, new uh, terms, uh, even uh, in the GitHub repo. Uh, you might probably uh, come across the term KIE, which is uh, an umbrella term uh, overarching uh, the whole uh, family of uh, projects uh, which uh, consist uh, the rules. Uh, you can see this uh, rules module. This is uh, the one that we will uh, talk about in this uh, presentation. There are other, such as JBPM, sorry, JBPM, uh, this workbench project, which uh, uh, form a web-based uh, application which uh, allows you to alter uh, the rules, uh, deploy uh, some so-called uh, knowledge packages or something like that, and uh, manage the rules. Uh, you can also see OptaPlan component, uh, which is uh, the topic for the next presentation. Let us uh, have a look at uh, the new pattern matching algorithm called Freak. Uh, the Freak evolved from uh, the previous implementation or a previous algorithm uh, known from the rules 5, which is called RTOO. Uh, the very basic difference of Freak from RIT is that Freak is lazy. Now, what does this mean? If you uh, have a look at uh, this RIT network, I'm not sure uh, how many of you uh, have uh, come, uh, have uh, tried something with uh, the rules, uh, but uh, we can explain the basic concepts of RIT network here. Uh, if you have effect which enters the rule engine, uh, the engine has to have to uh, efficiently uh, find uh, all rules which uh, uh, are matching the fact and uh, which uh, uh, should be triggered. Uh, this RIT network is a structure where uh, there are uh, some nodes which uh, correspond to the conditional elements in the uh, left-hand sides of the rules. And uh, basically, if effect uh, is inserted into the rule engine, it enters the network here. 
it is propagated through the network uh, as it passes uh, conditional elements if it uh, satisfies them. And finally, uh, it may reach a so-called terminal node. These uh, three terminal nodes correspond to three rules. Uh, and basically, if a fact or, a, or an object in general which is propagated through the network reaches the terminal node, then uh, the corresponding rule uh, may be fired. Uh, the key difference between uh, RETI and FREAK is that RETI does uh, all this work, this uh, object propagation through the network during uh, the time of uh, the insert of the fact. If you call uh, insert command on a key session or something like that, then uh, all this work is being done. Uh, then when you uh, insert another fact, uh, it gets propagated uh, as well. Uh, on the other hand, Freak uh, tries to avoid uh, unnecessary propagations through the network, and uh, it does that uh, by uh, using a heuristics uh, which uh, uh, tries to uh, pick uh, the most, uh, pick uh, the rule which is the most probable to fire given the current set of facts. And uh, then uh, Freak tries to uh, propagate uh, the objects through the network just for the uh, rule which has been uh, such uh, selected. This is very simplified, but uh, the basic idea is this. Uh, Freak uses some sort of queues for this, and uh, these queues are also partitioned against uh, uh, by uh, the agenda group, which uh, makes some uh, space for uh, further optimiza optimization. We will get to it later. So, consequences uh, of... Uh, this lazy beha behavior of Freak are the following. Uh, freak is more forgiving for poorly written rule bases. If you have uh, rules which uh, should be optimized or are a little bit uh, uh, not efficient, then uh, Freak uh, tries to avoid unnecessary propagations through the network, and it is very likely that uh, these inefficient rules uh, will cause... Uh, uh, less uh, slowdown. Uh, there is also more graceful performance degradation if you uh, use a large amount of facts and rules. And uh, the last uh, point may be uh, the most uh, interesting for practical reasons. You are able to use agenda groups and salience for performance tuning. Uh, we can uh, have a look at concrete examples. Uh, you may uh, later uh, have a look at this uh, GitHub project when uh, there are two examples illustrating uh, these uh, features. The first example is a simple test which just inserts some uh, amount of facts into the rule engine and calls uh, part of rules command. Uh, the amount of facts is about uh, 200,000. Uh, the rules are very simple. There are three, uh, three rules which uh, categorize uh, some accounts uh, according to the number of transactions they uh, uh, that uh, are assigned to this account. Uh, if uh, the number of transactions uh, assigned to some account, for instance, uh, a bank account, uh, is greater than some threshold, then uh, the account is uh, categorized as a gold account. Then there is some rule for silver account or bronze account. It is very simple. They differ only in... Uh, the number of uh, transactions. <coughs> if we have, uh, have a look at some results, uh, if uh, we run uh, 
this uh, set of rules and uh, this uh, set of uh, uh, facts uh, with uh, freak, then uh, the execution takes about uh, six seconds. With 3T, it takes about 52 seconds. Uh, this is not intended as a benchmark. This is uh, not measured properly to provide some uh, really uh, valid performance uh, statements, but uh, we can say that there is a notable difference in these numbers. Then uh, we have uh, another example which uses uh, agenda groups. And if you have a look at the rules, uh, they are almost the same. The only difference is that uh, they uh, declare agenda group for each of the rules. So we have uh, one agenda group for uh, the first rule, second agenda group for the second rule, and so on. Next, uh, if you have a look at the test, It is also almost the same as the previous one, but uh, uh, there is uh, this statement which activates only the agenda group gold. This uh, means that uh, only the first rule from uh, those three is allowed to fire. Now what happens with Riti and what happens with Freak? With Riti, uh, all the facts, as they are inserted uh, into the working memory, into the rule engine. Uh, they are propagated through the network for all the rules. And uh, at the end, uh, the engine just finds out that uh, these rules, uh, silver and bronze, uh, are not allowed to fire, so it just skips them. Uh, with Freak, uh, the only uh, part of the network which is evaluated is uh, uh, for the gold rule, so the results uh, the results reflect this, and you can see that with three the execution took about three point six seconds with three t it is uh, fifty three uh, interesting thing is that uh, this fact is also uh, that uh, Riti uh, is a little bit uh, dumb and uh, propagates all uh, the tuples and all the objects through all uh, the Riti network nodes. It's reflected uh, in uh, this observation that uh, the previous test, which didn't use agenda groups, took about 52 seconds and the test which uh, used agenda group took nearly the same time. So it is, uh, uh, it is obvious that uh, Rite didn't use the agenda group for optimization. Uh, if we have a look at uh, some other changes uh, to rules uh, uh, which are caused by employing new algorithm freak, uh, we can uh, find out that uh, these changes are, for instance, with uh, rule order. Uh, rule order has been uh, defined in rules 5 by salience, and then it was considered arbitrary. Uh, in rule 6, uh, the rule order is again defined by salience, but then uh, it is defined by the order of the rule in the file where it has been defined. So this is uh, uh, just one change. Another uh, is about firing time rules consequences. Uh, time rules are uh, such rules which have some uh, attribute saying or specifying that this rule should fire after some time or periodically during some time interval. And uh, there is uh, a little bit uh, uh, I would say, unexpected uh, behavior for the user with this because uh, uh, you have to call fire over rules command uh, more than once in order for these rules to uh, fire. I would like not to uh, dig uh, deep into this, uh, but we can talk about this after presentation if uh, someone is interested in this. 
I'm just mentioning it uh, to let you know and take care about uh, about this. There were also some other changes, such as uh, merging rule for row group and uh, agenda group, but uh, you can refer to these changes in documentation. Uh, we are getting to uh, the new Kia API. Basically, Kia API uh, replaces uh, the knowledge API, which was uh, uh, which was uh, uh, used in uh, rules five, and uh, basically it means that uh, all those knowledge base interfaces and uh, knowledge session interfaces were uh, renamed to Kia Base and Kia Session. Uh, there is also one other uh, major change which uh, reflects uh, the change of. Uh, the packages uh, of the packages which uh, rules uh, gathers uh, the uh, rules uh, into uh, the knowledge agent which was rules used in rules five used uh, proprietary binary format and uh, because rule six now use uh, maven uh, for uh, the distribution of uh, knowledge packages we will talk about it uh, in a second uh, the knowledge agent has been replaced by a uh, so-called Kia scanner. We can have a look at uh, some example uh, of uh, using the old knowledge API in rules five. You can see uh, that uh, you needed to use something like a knowledge builder. Uh, you uh, edit some uh, resource uh, with rules to this builder. Then you build uh, some knowledge packages, edit uh, them into knowledge base, and then uh, create a session from that knowledge base. And then you were able to insert some facts into the session and uh, fire all rules. Uh, with Kia API in rule six, uh, there is now, apart from a similar uh, programmatical approach, uh, there is now uh, the declarative way of defining uh, Kia modules or uh, Kia jars, uh, as they are called. Uh, first, you define uh, just an ordinary jar, which uh, contains uh, resources that you want. Uh, for instance, some DRLs uh, specifying uh, rules or uh, CSV files for decision tables and so on. Uh, then you uh, may have there some Java classes uh, if your rules need them. And uh, finally, you define a, a file, a key module XML, which uh, acts uh, sort of a descriptor defining which uh, key bases and which key sessions are defined by this, uh, by this uh, module. We can have a look at uh, an example. You can see how uh, such a descriptor may look like. It is uh, quite straightforward. You define a, a, a key base which uh, contains all resources uh, in a given package. And uh, you define also some key session for this uh, key base. You can prepare this jar yourself, uh, or you can use uh, Kia Maven plugin, which is part of the rules. You can use uh, Kia Workbench web application, or uh, use API to construct it programmatically. And then, if you have such a jar, you can use it. And you can use it uh, in a very elegant way that uh, you just uh, create, create so-called Kia container. Uh, which is given a Maven coordinate uh, for the artifact that it has to use. Uh, this is group ID, artifact ID, and version known from Maven. And uh, the uh, Kia API 
is able to look up uh, the jar uh, which has the following coordinates in a Maven repo or on a class path. And then you can uh, just uh, obtain the key session or a key base from the container just by stating its name. Then you can insert some facts into the session and you can uh, fire all rules such as it was done in rules five. If you would be, uh, if you were interested in some more examples, uh, you can have a look at, uh, uh, at the examples on GitHub. On uh, they are part of the Rules project. We are getting to the integration with CDI. It is uh, quite straightforward. Again, uh, you may leverage uh, CDI uh, context and dependency injection to inject a key base or a key session into your CDI bean, and uh, you avoid uh, manually creating key container and uh, calling the API. Uh, so we can use just this kind of annotations where you specify uh, the Maven coordinates for the jar, and you can specify the name of the key base or key session. Uh, this uh, annotation uh, key release ID is optional. If you uh, omit it, uh, there is uh, the key API doesn't uh, attempt to download any uh, jar or obtain uh, a Maven artifact. It just uh, scans uh, for uh, the key base with a given name on the class path. And uh, similarly, you can uh, inject a key session. You can see more examples at, uh, at, the, at the rules community uh, GitHub. Uh, so we have briefly uh, introduced uh, the rules and uh, its uh, new algorithm. We have uh, briefly covered uh, uh, the difference between Freak and 3TOO, and uh, we have spoken a few words about uh, Kia API and integration with CDI. So now is the time for some references. If you would like to uh, get more information about one of these topics, and of course, time for your questions if you have any. Yeah. Because of the way it's so, yeah. So, can you elaborate on this topic? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there are uh, indeed situations where the uh, rule, where the order of fire to rules is different. Uh, you can uh, use uh, for some uh, period uh, uh, the legacy RTO algorithm, even with uh, the rule six, if you uh, need it uh, some time for transition and uh, uh, some time for um, updating maybe your rules to reflect the changes uh, needed by Freak. So uh, I think that uh, you might use uh, this legacy RTOO implementation or uh, I'm wondering uh, about uh, the exact situation uh, with this, because uh, uh, usually in rules five, uh, the order of uh, fire to rules was uh, not uh, guaranteed. So uh, it is not 100% uh, uh, correct to rely on this, I would say. Uh, I, I admit that it might be used in practice in this way, but uh, there might be uh, these problems. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, there is a separate jar, and uh, you just add this dependency, and you uh, set uh, one system property. Uh, concretely, if you have a look at uh, the GitHub repo with the examples, you have uh, there are some notes about the tests, but uh, in the README you can see uh, the exact uh, name of the property and the value that you need to set. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, that's a great question, and I must admit I don't know the answer. <laughs> but uh, I just uh, found in the documentation that, uh, for instance, uh, the rule order is preserved even if you use key scanner to update your, rule, your rules and so on uh, to uh, some new version, uh, or you uh, try to uh, modify them dynamically. But... Uh, there was n no mention about uh, the case that you described, so uh, I think we must find out. But thanks for the good question. Any more questions? Okay, thank you for your attention.